5, chapters 10 to 12, volume 1 of Le Mot d'Arthur. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Shauna McNally. Le Mot d'Arthur, volume 1, by Sir Thomas Mallory, book 5, chapters 10 to 12. Chapter 10. Then they took their spears and ran at each other with all the might they had, and smote each other through their shields into their shoulders, wherefore anon they pulled out their swords, and smote great strokes that the fire sprang out of their helms. Then Sir Gawain was all abashed, and with Galatine, his good sword, he smote through shield and thick hauberk made of thick mails, and all to rush and break the precious stones, and made him a large wound that men might see both liver and lung. Then groaned that knight, and addressed him to Sir Gawain, and with an ox stroke gave him a great wound, and cut a vein, which grieved Gawain sore, and he bled sore. Then the knight said to Sir Gawain, Bind thy wound, or thy bleeding change, for thou be bleedest all thy horse and thy fair arms, for all the barbers of Brittany shall not con staunch thy blood, for whosomever is hurt with this blade, he shall never be staunched of bleeding. Then answered Gawain, It grieveth me but little, thy great words shall not fear me, nor lessen my courage, but thou shalt suffer teen and sorrow, or we depart, but tell me in haste who may staunch my bleeding. That may I do, said the knight, if I will, and so will I, if thou wilt succour and aid me, that I may be christened and believe on God, and thereof I require thee of thy manhood, and it shall be great merit for thy soul. I grant, said Gawain, so God help me, to accomplish all thy desire, but first tell me what thou soughtest here thus alone, and of what land and legions thou art of. Sir, he said, my name is Priamus, and a Greek prince is my father, and he hath been rebel unto Rome, and overridden many of their lands. My father is lineally descended of Alexander and of Hector by right line, and Duke Joshua and Maccabeus were of our lineage. I am right inheritor of Alexandria and Africa, and all the out isles, yet will I believe on thy lord that thou believest on, and for thy labor I shall give thee treasure enough. I was so elate and hotting in my heart that I thought no man my peer, nor to me semblable. I was sent into this war with seven score knights, and now I have encountered with thee, which hast given to me of fighting my fill. Wherefore, Sir Knight, I pray thee to tell me what thou art. I am no knight, said Gawain. I have been brought up in the guard robe with the noble King Arthur many years, for to take heed to his armor and his other array, and to point his paltocks that long to himself. At Yule last he made me yeoman, and gave to me horse and harness, and a hundred pound of money. And if fortune be my friend, I doubt not but to be well advanced and holpen by my liege lord. Ah, said Priamus, if his names be so keen and fierce, his knights be passing good. Now for the king's love of heaven, whether thou be a knave or a knight, tell thou me thy name. By God, said Sir Gawain, now will I say thee sooth. My name is Sir Gawain, and known I am in his court and in his chamber, and one of the knights of the round table. He dubbed me a duke with his own hand. Therefore grudge not if this grace is to me fortuned. It is the goodness of God that lent to me my strength. Now am I better pleased, said Priamus, than thou hadst given to me all the Provence and Paris the rich. I had liefer to have been torn with wild horses than any varlet had won such lose, or any page or priker should have had prize on me. But now, Sir Knight, I warn thee that hereby is a Duke of Lorraine with his army, and the noblest men of Dolphony, and lords of Lombardy, with the garrison of Gadar, and Saracens of Southland, numbered sixty thousand of good men of arms. Wherefore, but if we hie us hence, it will harm us both, for we be sore hurt, never like to recover. But take heed to my page, that he no horn blow, for if he do, there be hoving here fast by a hundred knights awaiting on my person, and if they take thee, there shall no ransom of gold nor silver acquit thee. Then Sir Gawain rode over a water for to save him, and the knight followed him, and so rode forth till they came to his fellows which were in the meadow, where they had been all the night. Anon as Sir Wishard was ware of Sir Gawain, and saw that he was hurt, he ran to him sorrowfully weeping, and demanded of him who had so hurt him. And Gawain told how he had foughten with that man, and each of them had hurt other, and how he had salves to heal them. But I can tell you other tidings, that soon we shall have ado with many enemies. Then Sir Priamus and Sir Gawain alighted, and let their horses graze in the meadow, and unarmed them, and then the blood ran freshly from their wounds. And Priamus took from his page a vial full of the four waters that came out of paradise, and with certain balm anointed their wounds, and washed them with that water within an hour after they were both as whole as ever they were. And then with a trumpet were they all assembled to council, and their Priamus told unto them what lords and knights had sworn to rescue him, and that without fail they should be assailed with many thousands, wherefore he counselled them to withdraw them. 
Then Sir Gawain said, It were great shame to, avo to them to avoid without any strokes. Wherefore I advise to take our arms, and to make us ready to meet with these Saracens and misbelieving men, and with the help of God we shall overthrow them, and have a fair day on them. And Sir Florence shall abide still in this field to keep the stale as a noble knight, and we shall not forsake yonder fellows. Now, said Priamus, cease your words, for I warn you, ye shall find in yonder woods many perilous knights. They'll put forth beasts to call you on, they be out of number, and ye are not past seven hundred, which be over few to fight with so many. Nevertheless, said Sir Gawain, we shall once encounter them, and see what they can do, and the best shall have the victory. Chapter 11 Then Sir Florence called to him Sir Floridus, with a hundred knights, and drove forth the herd of beasts, and followed him seven hundred men of arms, and Sir Ferrant of Spain, on a fair steed, came springing out of the woods, and came to Sir Florence, and asked him why he fled. Then Sir Florence took his spear, and rode against him, and smote him in the forehead, and brake his neck bone. Then all the other were moved, and thought to avenge the death of Sir Ferrant, and smote in among them, and there was great fight, and many slain, and laid down to ground, and Sir Florence, with his hundred knights, always kept the stale, and fought manly. And when Priamus, the good knight, perceived the great fight, he went to Sir Gawain, and bade him that he should go and succor his fellowship, which were sore bestead with their enemies. Sir, grieve you not, said Sir Gawain, for their grief shall be theirs. I shall not once move my horse to them ward, but if I see more than there be, for they be strong enough to match them. And with that he saw an earl called Sir Ethelwold, and the Duke of Dutchmen came leaping out of a wood with many thousands, and Priamus knights, and came straight unto the battle. And Sir Gawain comforted his knights, and bade them not to be abashed, for all shall be ours. Then they began to wallop, and met with their enemies. There were men slain and overthrown on every side. Then thrust in among them the knights of the table round, and smote down to the earth all them that withstood them, insomuch that they had that they made them to recoil and flee. By God, said Sir Gawain, this gladdeth my heart, for now be they less in number by twenty thousand. Then entered into the battle Jubins, a giant, and fought and slew downright, and distressed many of our knights, among whom was slain Sir Gerard, a knight of Wales. Then our knights took heart to them, and slew many Saracens. And then came in Sir Priamus with his pennon, and rode with the knights of the round table, and fought so manfully that many of their enemies lost their lives. And there Sir Priamus slew the Marquis of Moises' land, and Sir Gawain with his fellows so quit them that they had the field. But in that stour was Sir Chestelaine, a child and ward of Sir Gawain slain, wherefore was much sorrow made, and his death was soon avenged. Thus was the battle ended, and many lords of Lombardy and Saracens left dead in the field. Then Sir Florence and Sir Gawain harbored surely their people, and took great plenty of bestial, of gold and silver, and great treasure and riches, and returned unto King Arthur, which lay still at the siege. And when they came to the king, they presented their prisoners, and recounted their adventures, and how they had vanquished their enemies. Chapter 12 Now thanked be God, said the noble King Arthur, but what manner man is he that standeth by himself? Him seemeth no prisoner. Sir, said Gawain, this is a good man of arms. He hath matched me, but he is yielded unto God, and to me, for to become Christian. Had not he have been, we should never have returned. Wherefore I pray you that he may be baptized, for there liveth not a nobler man nor better knight of his hands. Then the king let him anon be christened, and did do call him his first name Priamus, and made him a duke and knight of the table round. And then anon the king let do cry assault to the city, and there was rearing of ladders, breaking of walls, and the ditch filled, that men with little pain might enter into the city. Then came out a duchess, and Clarison the countess, with many ladies and damosels, and kneeling before King Arthur, required him for the love of God to receive the city, and not to take it by assault, for then should many guiltless be slain. Then the king availed his visor with a meek and noble countenance, and said, Madam, there shall none of my subjects misdo you nor your maidens, nor to none that to you belong, but the duke shall abide my judgment. Then anon the king commanded to leave the assault, and anon the duke's oldest son brought out the keys, and kneeling delivered them to the king, and besought him of grace. And the king seized the town by assent of his lords, and took the duke, and sent him to Dover, therefore to abide prisoner term of his life, and assigned certain rents for the dower of the duchess and for her children. Then he made lords to rule those lands, and laws as a lord ought to do in his own country, and after he took his journey toward Rome, and sent Sir Floris and Sir Floridas to four, with five hundred men of arms, and they came to the city of Urbino, and laid there a bushment, there as them seemed most best for them, and rode to fore the town, where anon issued out much people, and skirmished with the fore-riders. 
then break out the bushment and won the bridge, and after the town, and set upon the walls the king's banner. Then came the king upon a hill, and saw the city and his banner on the walls, by which he knew that the city was won. And anon he sent and commanded that none of his liege men should defoul nor lie by no lady, wife, nor maid. And when he came into the city, he passed to the castle, and comforted them that were in sorrow, and ordained there a captain, a knight of his own country. And when they of Milan heard that the city was won, they sent to King Arthur great sums of money, and besought him as their lord to have pity on them, promising to be his subjects forever, and yield to him homage and fealty for the lands of Plaisance and Pavia, Peter Saint, and the port of Tremble, and to give him yearly a million of gold all his lifetime. Then he rideth into Tuscany, and winneth towns and castles, and wasted all in his way that to him will not obey, and so to Spalute and Viterbe, and from thence he rode into the Vale of Viscount among the vines. And from thence he sent to the senators, to wit whether they would know him for their lord. But soon after, on a Saturday, came unto King Arthur all the senators that were left there alive, and the noblest cardinals that then dwelt in Rome, and prayed him of peace, and proffered him full large, and besought him as governor to give license for six weeks for to assemble all the Romans, and then to crown him emperor with chrism, as it belongeth to so high a state. I assent, said the king, like as ye have devised, and at Christmas there to be crowned, and to hold my round table with my knights as me liketh. And then the senators made ready for his enthronization. And at the day appointed, as the romance telleth, he came into Rome, and was crowned emperor by the pope's hand, with all the royalty that could be made, and sojourned there a time, and established all his lands from Rome into France, and gave lands and realms unto his servants and knights, to every after his desert in such wise that none complained, rich nor poor. And he gave to Sir Priamus the Duchy of Lorraine, and he thanked him, and said he would serve him the days of his life, and after made dukes and earls, and made every man rich. Then after this all his knights and lords assembled them before him, and said, Blessed be God, your war is finished, and your conquest achieved, insomuch that we know none so great nor mighty that dare make war against you. Wherefore we beseech you to return homeward, and give us license to go home to our wives, from whom we have been long, and to rest us, for your journey is finished with honour and worship. Then said the king, Ye say truth, and for to tempt God it is no wisdom, and therefore I make you ready, and return we into England. Then there was trussing of harness and baggage and great carriage. And after license given, he returned and commanded that no man in pain of death should not rob nor take victual, nor other thing by the way, but that he should pay therefore. And thus he came over the sea, and landed at Sandwich, against whom Queen Guinevere his wife came and met him, and he was nobly received of all his commons in every city in Burra, and great gifts presented to him at his homecoming to welcome him with. End of Book 5, Chapters 10-12